You doing your reggae dancing? <laughs> Would it be better if I sat down? We got the joy wig back in the woods. <laughs> Joey's gonna play. We're gonna get Joey to play. <laughs> Welcome to Brahma Nurguna. This is a story of Zither and what shook them up. Was it the management? Was it the world tours? Or was it the wild parties? Specifically, people say it was Dave's fault. <laughs> that was a beer can. It all went to Dave's head. Got like the biggest ego I've ever seen in my life. I mean, he was very, like, I want to be in the front, I want to write all the songs, I want to do all this, and, you know? January 27, 1985, Zither gave this interview. We are called Zither. Uh-huh. And um, that is because we play an instrument called a Zither. <laughs> and it's a, an old folk instrument having 30 to 40 strings, which is what? strummed. Okay, um... <laughs> Also, let's see, uh, there was one question I knew I had to ask, I knew it. Maybe you guys can remind me of that question. Come on. Um, where are bandas planning to go in the future with instrumentation? Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, Zither, I think you'd, it'd be kind of strange to call yourself Zither and all of a sudden go to electric guitars or well, go to... Uh, we plan on keeping the Zither. Okay. And that's the main center of our band. Yeah. We want to be with the folk orientation because it is a, an yeah. old folk instrument. So uh -huh. In that kind of a direction. Okay. Hey, do you know what the notes of the, the six notes of the guitar strings are? Um, I think my guitar is out of tune. Gotta live at home. Um, it's kind of a, a pressure situation, I guess. And I work, so I guess I've given up control of my life. I wish people would just give me money. Wait a second, I hear something. Come, follow me. I'll show you. I'll show you something. Listen. Hurry, hurry. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? It's what Zither has become. It's... It's, it's what the climax of Zither. Shh, shh. Listen. Can you hear it? our greatest tune, Columbia. Yeah. You know, the funny part is I'm not even seeing royalties from this. I think Dennis has them all. It's not as if they get started originally. Oh, uh, back in, I don't know, 81, uh, myself and Dennis were in high school together. And we discovered we had a mutual interest in, you know, playing progressive, progressive music, you know, that, uh, you know, did a lot for, you know, I mean, it was feelings, it was, what we were doing was, it was all about feelings, and, uh, you know, we just kept on hammering and hammering, and we got a drummer, we actually, we've had the highest turnover in drummers, you know, and, uh, we keep on losing them. 
Hall, right here. The place, uh, this is where we first used to play uh, Two Bodies. Really enjoyed playing there. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of help. I don't think, well, we, were, we didn't have a manager. So that, that was one strike against us. And then we didn't get a lot of help from uh, local radio stations. I mean, college radio stations used to play this all the time uh, when we first started out. But uh, we didn't get a lot of help from the uh, bigger commercial stations, which they get, do get now. And um, they, like, um, WMS, for example, they wouldn't play us at all. We sent them our tapes. I, you know, I got in, got inside, gave them my tapes. You know, our tapes, you know. I keep on saying my tapes because I feel like they are my songs. They are, even though you know, Dennis wrote a lot of them. But uh, Zither was my mine. It was your creation, actually. Yeah, yeah. Zither was my vision, my my uh, ideas. So who are your early influences? Music, music, music. Music. Oh, I didn't realize yeah, we were talking. Influence. I didn't realize we were talking about music here. Um, musical influences. Um, I don't know. Uh, the usuals, you know. Uh, Adrian Ballou, uh, John Lee Hooker. Uh, those kind of like blues uh, bands that are unknown, I guess you might say. Or, I mean, they're not unknown, but I mean, hell, if you ever show that, you know, doesn't know that. But. You know, after a while, back to uh, back to our following, though, we developed quite a following down here in the flats. I really, really haven't been down here, you know, since our since before our world tour. And, uh, I really, I really, this is like my roots. You know, Coming back home, you, is that it? Yeah, I'm glad you brought me down here. Zither was a power band. You were full of power, and you know. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was just Let's fun, you know, well, actually it wasn't fun because, you know, everyone else took it so lightly, and I was really, I was really serious about it, and, uh, you know, it was just, um, until the cookie thing started out. Uh, let's change the subject and get on this cookie addiction. Cookies? Oh, well, what, do you, what, what about my cookie addiction? You know, I, I'm not going to deny that I was addicted to cookies. It's true, you know. It's um, you know, it's, it's, it's something you know. It happens to everyone. I mean, not everyone, but it can happen to you. Well, I know it was a rough time being plastered all over the tabloids, having your privacy invaded, but but still, you really waited too long to seek help, and uh, it almost ruined your career. At least that's just my opinion. I think. I don't think you did it. You, you haven't talked to the right people about this. You're just reading. You're just, you're just talking about what you've read in the papers, read in the, the tabloids, the Star, the Weekly World News. You know. What, what did you talk about my, my court? You, you, you look at the uh, transcripts from my trial. Did you happen to see that? No, sir. No. Well, if you would have read that, you would have discovered. You know. I mean, if you would have learned that. You know. Yeah. Well, it was my fault, sure. But. Uh, I was acquitted of all charges of cookie possession and uh, cookie cookie use. Some say you bribe the judge. I started going on binges, a lot of binges. I mean, it was, it was really it was really bad. You know, cookies, of course. But uh, you know, we, we started getting into a more you know a mobile jazz type stuff, becoming more of an interesting band. <laughs> Eastern philosophies, the, uh, the the Hinduism and everything, and, and the cookies. It was a bad scene. We were uh, we were rehearsing, we were recording. We, you know, we were finally finally hit the big time. We'd uh, been playing a lot of bars and everything, and we finally uh, we opened up for uh, uh, McCoy Tyner. It was a kind of an interesting billing because uh, he and his jazz trio, and we're going going around all these jazz clubs. Uh, opening up from McCoy Tyner, and we were just playing this 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 stuff was just out there, and McCoy dug us, you know. But uh, he said, "What are you guys playing here for?" And he, he got us that stadium gig. Uh, so we were we were uh, we were rehearsing for that stadium gig, and we were getting into our uh, music inspired by horror movies set.
asked if he wanted to play, um, I want to buy a Cuisinart forever. And he couldn't take it. He threw his guitar on the floor, and then he left. Then he walked back in and got his guitar and left again. And, uh, tried talking to him, and he's just unreasonable. All he talks about is what I want. I want this. I want that. I want to do this. I want to buy a Cuisinart. Cuisinart. Weezer Nerd, 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 Weezer He always would, when things weren't going his way, he'd just leave and walk off and swear at us, bad mouth us. Just like always. Well, we did get back together. I could handle that. I don't know about, I can't speak for everybody else, but I would like to do that. Get back together and work on some new stuff. Maybe if Dave will calm down a bit, and we could try it. scenes from 1987's Columbia by Zither. I'd say, uh, I'd say that Columbia was from uh, Zither's heyday. Uh, we hit about the height of it. We had some, we had some really good uh, music with depth after that. Uh, that, that too. She, uh, um, she stole Dave's mind. She, uh, she, she talked to him too much, and all he ever had time to do after that was listen to Carol talk. tight with Sid Vicious before he died. Um, yeah, true? Sid and I, well, I met Sid, I was fairly, I was very young at the time when I met Sid. Uh, I was just a couple months before he died. Uh, same kind of thing, you know, I feel very lucky because uh, there was a woman in my life, and, and I guess some people might say she messed up our relationship, but I mean, the same thing happened to him, to do one further, and actually leading to his own mortality. Well, some people say that uh, he's the one that actually screwed up your relationship with uh, Carol. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, those two were seen on many occasions together at different uh, functions. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, once again, you're speculating, and you're, I think you're trying to piss me off. And uh, I'm just trying. If to, this is if this is how you want to conduct your interview, you know. I'm just trying to dig out your your inside emotions, and I need to bring out the real you. Uh, you know. Oh, come on now. And what of Ken Yeagle? Zither's only bassist. I said no comment. No comment. <laughs> Get away from me. I said no comment. I have nothing more to say. Did you hear me? You know, I lived in Cleveland for a long time. I, I really, I really feel you know, like I'm part of the community. I've been here. My family's been here for 
four or five generations, and uh, we're almost part of the family. And so, you know, my family is, you know, a very big part of Cleveland. And uh, one day, you know, I hope to have a monument here, just like Moses Cleveland. Keep the camera rolling. Keep it rolling. What a tragedy. Call 911. Steve Schmidt cut down in the prime of his life. What a tragedy. Make the network news. It's too late anyway. We'll never see this thing again, I can tell you that. Mama don't allow no music playing around here. But mama don't allow no music playing around here. But what do I care what she don't allow? I play my music anyhow. My mama don't allow no music playing in here. Mama don't allow no music playing round here. My mama don't allow no music playing round here. But what do I care what she don't allow?